So let's try to understand these three-dimensional individual rotation matrices before we move on. So first, we rotate minus 5. So remember, we're starting in the body axes. We have XB here. We're going to rotate around itself here. So let's just draw notionally that we have YB and ZB. And we're rotating about the local X axis. So the axis itself, the XB axis, doesn't change. So x new is x old. However, the y and z axes are rotated around that x body axis by negative 5. I'll illustrate that. We started with these axes. There's zb and there's yb. So, ZB and YB, this is now called as Z new and Y new. And it was the angle phi in this direction that takes you from the new axis to the, the body axis. So that's why the rotation is by negative phi. So to write these out in full, y new is going to be cos phi times y old minus sine phi z old and z new will be sine phi y old plus cos phi z old. Now, if we assemble that into a matrix, what we get is x, y, z, new is, remember the x axis itself wasn't changed, but the y. And z axes are so we can write this in a matrix like this. Then we do the same process for the other two rotations. And if we take the product of all three, we get the matrix, the three by three transformation matrix from E to B which is big and nasty looking, but it looks like this. Cos theta, cos phi, cos theta, sine phi, negative sine theta. I'm just going to put dashed lines in between each column to help differentiate the columns from one another. Sine phi, sine theta, Cos psi minus cos phi sine psi sine phi sine theta sine psi plus cos phi cos psi sine phi cos theta and cos phi sine theta cos psi plus sine psi 
right, phi sine psi cos phi sine theta sine psi minus sine phi cos psi and then finally cos phi cos theta And from the results of our earlier discussion on transformation matrices, we can say that TB is TEB inverse and is just TEB transpose. So this represents the rotation sequence in the opposite order, psi. Theta phi. One more thing for today. Is flow angles. Instead of specifying the body axis velocity of an aircraft with three velocity components, it's common and useful to use the velocity magnitude, the infinity, the angle of attack alpha, and the slide slope angle beta. So we can write the body axis velocity, which is ux, uy, uz, and body axes, using negative v infinity in body axes, which we can write as v infinity times cos alpha cos beta sine beta and sine alpha cos beta. Note that this is just an extension of our two-dimensional representation of aerodynamic bodies where we usually just use v infinity and alpha. So the side slip um, and beta indicate how much the velocity, the infinity, is out of the uh, body xz plane. And if we want to write these out mathematically, v infinity is square root of u x b squared plus u y b squared plus u z b squared. And the angle of attack has the same definition that it had in two dimensions, uzb over uxb, while the slide slip angle has a slightly different definition, an inverse of uyb over u x b squared plus u z b squared square root. So the, note that there's a difference in the def ways that alpha and beta are defined. Alpha has no consideration of the side slip velocity, but beta does consider the vertical component of the velocity. And that's all for today. Next time we'll start using 
these definitions and tools to develop uh, the dynamics of aircraft.